Hello and welcome to another episode of Scratch Saturday where we look at some Scratch programs I've written and see how I made them. This week we're looking at a simple maths game um, and seeing a multiple choice and seeing how it works. Just to show you how it works, you basically have a sheep asking a qu uh, saying whose turn it is, a sheep asking a sum and one of the three players being correct. It's a race between Larry and Debbie, uh, one by eight, it's Larry's turn, if he gets it right, he goes up the hill, it's Debbie's turn. Uh, she also goes up the hill, so you can notice that actually these flowers are randomised. Um, so just uh, be aware of that. Um, if they get it right, they move up. If they get it wrong, they um, they go down. We'll show uh, Larry getting something wrong here. Down he goes, and similarly with uh, Debbie. I'm oh, sorry, I got it right. Um, we'll get Debbie to get one wrong. There we go. Off she goes back down. Okay, uh, basically when they reach the end, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, once they uh, reach the end, they uh, the, the game ends with the person winning. So let's have a look inside uh, this project to see um, how it all works. Um, weirdly enough, the biggest thing that uh, the co amount of code is going to be about arranging these flowers in the right order. So we'll focus on that because there's a lot going on in the um, in the game. So here is our, our game and basically um, we have the stage, which has no code, that's just something I quickly that I made up. We have got a finish line, which has no code. Okay, so that's two things with no code. The rest, uh, we also have some help. So click on the flower with the answer. That's just a, uh, that also has no code. So three of three things are with no code. Two sprites in your stage. Really, um, the we have our woman who is called Debbie. Debbie has lots of code here, and basically the one who I'm going to look at to start off with is when we click the green flag, she's we set her to move to the bottom of the hill. And similarly with the man, um, here it is, when we click on the green flag, he moves down the hill to the same part. So that's at the very start of the game. There's a couple of other things um, that we need to look at. Broadcast, move Larry. We also have De move Debbie. And we've got bad Larry and bad Debbie. That's when they get an answer wrong. Uh, move Larry and move Debbie are when they get the answer right. And when you actually click um, on the sprite, it will actually tell you how far away are they from the top. I didn't, um, which is uh, very interesting. So if I just click on one of them, I'm only 408 meters and stuff, which is an interesting um, idea uh, that I didn't realize I'd done. So that's uh, just a, a little Easter egg uh, in there for you there. Um, the next uh, piece of code really is uh, the sheep who asked the question. They effectively asked the question. Um, I'll go into that in a minute. And uh, this sheep um, it says, it says whose go it is. But also, when you click the green flag, it does all the resetting. It sets n1, which is our number one, our number, and our, our two, our two numbers that multiply to each other. So we're that's it. We're doing six multiplied by nine equals 50, uh, equals fifty-four. N1 will be set to six, and N2 will be set to nine. We also set the turn to be zero. So whoever's turn it is, because we're going to use a function called mod um, to find out whose turn it is, and then whose turn it is as well. We will um, that also will tell us whose turn it is as well. So turn will be the so turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four, and who will be a result of what happens with turn. The sound of the start is called fairy dust and um we also have a timer which we reset um as well. Um and basically that's kind of everything set up um in terms of those. The flowers, when they start, they uh, go to their positions. That's uh, flower one is at minus fifty Flower 2 is at 30, which is the middle, and flower 3 is at 110. They're the three positions they're going to be in. Now you'll see lots and lots of code there, and uh, we'll get into the reasons for that. So once we uh, start the game, there's, uh, as I said, there's a lot going on. Uh, the start of the game really is that we broadcast the next turn, and when we hear, when we see the next turn, uh, we have a timer set, um, and we say the turn is going to be is at zero. Now zero mod two is zero. That means basically it's the remainder when you divide by two. So turn one will be one mod two. The answer to that is one because one divided by two is zero remainder one. If we go if we're on turn fifty eight, you'd also have a, a fifty eight mod two would be zero because fifty eight divided by two is has zero remainder. But if we have fifty nine turn fifty nine, then the answer would be one as well because uh, fifty nine mod two would be um, twenty nine with the remainder of one. And basically you set um, if it equals zero, basically if it's an even number, who will be zero, which means it's going to be Larry's turn, so the sheep will say Larry's turn, and if it's an odd number, it'll be Debbie's turn. So that's basically the reason for that. And then we simply ask the question. Now the person who's, or the sheep in this case, who's answer, asking the question, 
is here and basically what they need to do is they need, we're setting up an array called the sum and the sum is effectively the whole sentence what is number one multiplied by number two question mark so basically that's all I'm going to be doing so we're going to add uh, so basically to create the array uh, rather than say, uh, rather than messing around with joining uh, whereas I've just started to create an array so we add what is to sum so what is and we set number one to a number and random between one and ten so what is let's say six multiplied by um, multiplied by uh, nine let's say in this case and then number three will be the answer which is an n1 by n2 so the, that is going to be the correct answer so n3 will have its character we broadcast something called all set at that point and while that's going on we add n1 which is the number um, six to sum the multiplication sign then the number, second number nine then the question mark so when and then it's going to say it so it's going to say what is six multiplied by nine question mark that's what it says now remember all set has happened here so we look at our um, a1 so a1 in this case is um, is basically it's going to say the answer that's all it's going to say the answer here um, so this is going to be the correct answer in this case would be 54 in a2 what's it going to do when it hears all set, it's going to pick a random number between uh, 1 and 10, and there's a little check just to make sure we're not getting the same answers. If the M2 is equal to one of the numbers, then we're just going to change that number up by one, So and then we say this wrong answer. Okay, that's fairly simple, that's on all set. And then A3 is something similar, that it's going to compare itself uh, to if um, that they're going to pick a number between 1 and 10, and if, it, if it's the same as N2, it's also going to change that number by one, and it's just going to say, that number so we have different ways we're definitely going to have a different sum no matter what so m2 and m and m1 are uh, the changed uh, variables so there's no chance of anything going wrong now the um the next thing then really is um what happened where do we place these numbers so basically um when we're ready it's it's the turn then it's someone's turn basically um, we set the question, so the question is going to either be one of three types. Now, the reason I pick one of three types is actually the, the, the question is where, where the answer is going to, is, is where, where we're placing the flower. So this is number one position, number two position, and number three position. So if the position, I really should have called that variable uh, position, really, I think, but anyway, um, if this uh, question position is one, we're going to put it, the flower there, okay? Otherwise, if the question is number two, so if the position is number two, it we put it there, uh, or else we put it there. So that's very simple for our first flower. Now here's where the trouble goes, because we can't. We have to make sure that the second flower doesn't go in the same place as the first flower. So let's find this one out. We're broke, by the way, at the end. Once we've um, once we put this flower down, we broadcast flower two. So when we get flower two, there's a few things that could happen. Okay, if the um, answer is question one, we have to set. Um, the second position to either be placed two of three okay so if the position is number one we have to put him down in position uh, number two or three so if it's number two it goes here or else it's number three so we have this position and either one of these two positions now if the uh, answer was number two of course then it can't go here so you have to select this or this and finally if it was in question number three if the position was there then it has to be one of two so that's simple enough and then after that we move into flower three so we make a third uh, flower. This is where it gets a bit more complicated. And we have the six possibilities now. You see how it's increasing. Uh, we had one uh, possibility, now we then we three possibilities, now we're up to six possibilities. So basically, we if we have um, the uh, first question is in position three and the second question is number two, then we need to put it in position one. If uh, the question uh, position is number one and three, we have to put it into number two. If it's position two and number three, so and so on. You get the idea. The six different possibilities, and it basically slots into the thing. That's how the three daffodils end up in the in the one place. So there we have that. Now we go back to actually answering the questions. If you click this, because this is the right answer, A one is always the right answer, no matter where it is in the three. If um, it, it's going to be right. So if we're, it's Larry's turn, so it's if who is equal to zero, that's Larry's turn. Then we're going to broadcast move Larry because we want him to move up. Uh, or else we're going to move Debbie. She's going to move up. So let's go to, uh, let's see that it's Larry's turn. Um, so when I receive move Larry, Larry comes to the front, you see he's at the behind at the moment, uh, and he makes the sound. He says, yeah, 
um, and he sets uh, and basically he moves according to the timer so actually the quicker you answer the quicker um, the, the more you move up um, and basically we uh, change uh, we basically move them at an angle you see there's a slope let's just have a look at the slope uh, this is basically how we work on a slope okay once he reaches uh, an X position of 185 which is around here basically you'll hear a sound do 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 or something like that and the game stops or else you just change the turn up by one and it becomes Debbie's turn and uh, we broadcast the next turn so that is uh, so that's that's basically all that happens there if you click on Larry as we said before it tells you how long how far away he is in meters from the end which is uh, just a bit of trickery and um, the thing is if you uh, then Get, click on the wrong answer, so A2 and A3 are always the wrong answer, so let's look at A3. If you're doing that, if it's Larry's turn, we contact blah, bad Larry. And bad Larry is if I receive bad Larry, he goes to the front, he makes a scream, and then he goes uh, he goes back down the hill um, by 50, so 50 spaces. So, to, so basically, you don't want to get your answer wrong, and then you just change the turn. So you're either right, and you go up according to how fast you did, or you go down by 50. Uh, it's the same with Debbie here, the woman in Sprite. She also uh, will move up or down as well, and you can click on her to see how far away you are. Um, that's really uh, the entirety of the um, of the program. It, it's uh, it's complicated enough, really, but uh, really the only complication is move. Uh, I think is uh, these three guys moving them into the into the three places. There's a lot of prob uh, a lot of uh, messing around there, but ultimately um, the other variable, of course, is making sure that we know it's Debbie's turn. And Larry's turn through that mod function, which I think is a is a handy one to have. Anyway, uh, I'm sure there's lots of improvements that we made to this game, uh, and if you'd like to try them out, uh, please do so. I suppose the uh, final thing um, I, I didn't really do too much on it, really, though. Just to this is the code here, really, for your um, slope. So just um, make sure that you um, make sure that you have a look at those slopes. Basically, you're moving up uh, by a, a quarter for each one, so you're moving up at a, at an angle. Um, and uh, that's that's uh, why uh, the code is the way it is. You can have a look at that closer. Um, as I said, uh, the link to the project is in um, is in the description. And uh, as I said, please add your comments. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this program, and we will see you next Saturday for another Scratch Saturday.